Hello, YOM family. So I've been asked to talk about healthy sexuality and I have a challenge for you today. A couple years ago, someone came into our YWAM base and they were talking about health and they were talking actually about food. And it really challenged us because they said that the Christian religion was the most obese religion in the world and that no one looked to Christianity for health. That one hit us really hard as a base and we began from that moment to just change a lot of things in the way we lived our life and the way we cooked and where we spent our money and our food um, because we wanted to make the world jealous for Christian health. We're like, as Christians, we should be setting an example in health, in the way we eat and the way we do things. And we want people to be attracted to that. So I am a psychologist. I'm also a sexologist and a, and a couples therapist. And I began to think, wow, what if God wants that in our sexuality and is as our couples and in our marriages. God created sex. So Christian marriages should be the example of excellence in sex because our God created sex, so we should be the masters of sex. Let me, let me tell you what I mean about this. If you want an iPhone, you're not going to go to Samsung or to Huawei or to whatever other brand there is, you're not going to go to those stores to buy an iPhone. You're going to go to the Apple store or you're going to go to a store that sells Apple products if you want an iPhone. So here is the question. Here is the challenge. Why are people going to the world to figure out about sex? Why aren't people flocking to God to figure out about sex because God is the creator of sex. So people should be going to the creator to figure out how to do something. So in this, I feel like as a church, as a YWAM community, as YWAM all over the world, we should be the ones giving higher sexual education. We should be the ones who have the better story because we have the better story. God created sex to be contained in a marriage between one man and one woman. Why? Because it's, it's such a powerful tool of connection. And if I would go into the science, um, you can look up the funnel of the orgasm if you want, be careful about that. Um, but you can figure out all the, the uh, what are these called in English? Sorry guys, my brain is in Spanish. The hormonas, the hormones. The horm oh, I hate that word in English, the hormones. You can figure out all the hormones that are released during an orgasm. God created an orgasm to connect you and to seal in your memory with what is in front of you. This is amazing when you are having sex and you're having an orgasm with your spouse because you are connecting and you are um, searing into your brain images of that moment. What happens if you're having sex with your hand? What happens if you're having sex um, in front of porn? What happens if you're having sex with a different person every day? You are searing into your brain memories and connections with these other things, with, your, with yourself, with your hand, or with a computer, or with a phone, or something else. And so God didn't create sex for that. But the world is trying to teach us that have sex however you want, whenever you want, with whomever you want. And it's creating this distortion and this brokenness. And so I'm here to challenge you, why one family? We need to have the better story. We need to be sharing this better story. We need to be talking about yada. In the Bible, when it says, and Adam um, knew his wife, that's yada, which is the same verb that it talks about when it says, be still and know me. Be still and yada me. This yada, this word is so powerful because it talks about connection, about deep understanding and respect, being deeply understood and respected and deeply knowing and respecting another person. And out of that comes love. Out of that comes true love. And that's what sex is. Sex is deeply knowing and understanding the other person. If we understand this, 
we're not going to be tempted by the world's sex. Why would you want superficial physical pleasure that connects you to negative things that later on you have to like deal with and trauma out of if you can have deep connection, deep knowing, respecting connection with your spouse. And that's what you want. If we understand the gift of sex, the world sex is not a temptation. And I, and I like this, it's kind of like, and again, um, I don't know if there's anyone out there who's maybe a Samsung fan, so I'll talk about Samsung instead of iPhone, just in case. But it's like, if you are a Samsung fan, you don't want anything else. You don't want the fakes, you don't want the off brands because you know what you want and you know the quality of what you want. This is the story we need about sex, not about don't do this, don't do that, that's terrible, that's not okay because it's just bringing this fear, it's bringing this, oh, I'm missing out. I need to go do something else because I'm missing out on something great. No, we have the better story because God created sex. God created sex to be in this covering, in this case of marriage because only there is when you can truly give yourself. Let me explain this just one other way. Outside of marriage, you always have to hold back a little bit to stay safe because sex goes to the deepest part of who you are and it brings this out and it shares it with the other person. And so when you're having sex with your hand, with porn, with someone you're not committed to, you always need to hold a little bit back just in case to protect yourself. So it's like, yeah, I can give myself in to physical pleasure, but I need to protect this part because it's not, it's not safe. I'm not committed. I'm not known by that person. I don't trust that person. God created the only way to truly enjoy sex is when you're inside a marriage. Why? Because then it's like, I am committed to you. I am yoked to you. I am profoundly entwined legally with you so I can let go of all of my walls, of all of my protection, and I can give myself to you in vulnerability. You guys, vulnerability we know is the key. We, we work in that in our DTSs in all of our schools, vulnerability in front of God, accountability with your one-on-ones. Sex is like the extreme of vulnerability and accountability. It's the extreme, you're being known, you're naked, you have no protection in front of that other person, which is amazing if you're doing that to truly know and connect with another person. And it is so dangerous if you are doing that with someone or with something that is not protected. And so you're having to hold back, you're not being able to truly experience that because it's not safe. And so in this YWAM family, I want to challenge you. We need to bring the better story of healthy sexuality. We need to study. We need to understand it. We need to see the science behind it. There's some amazing science coming, um, coming out about having multiple partners, about porn. Um, stuff is confirming the Bible, guys. It's out there. The science is out there that confirms the Bible, confirms the way God is saying this stuff. We need to know that stuff. We need to bring back the better story bring in this healthy sexual view, not condemning, not um, casting people out, not rejecting, but really showing the better story. Because if we have the better story, we don't want the fake stuff. We won't even be tempted by the fake stuff. We'll truly want what God intended and what God has for us in sexuality. So my friends, my YWAM family, I encourage you, think about this, process about this and and just see if you are part of the answer. If you need to bring a little bit more of this understanding about healthy sexuality, about what God says about sex to the next generations or even to the people around you. With that, our motto is to know God <laughs> and make him known. So in this, if it's our challenge and our calling to know God and make him known, part of what God created was sex and Sex is to know another person and to be known. And so I feel like this is something that's definitely inside our DNA and definitely something we need to be working on in our schools, in our leadership teams, and on our bases. So from that, 
God bless you guys. Thank you for this privilege to be able to talk to you about this. It's my passion. It's something I'm super excited about. And I'm super excited as a YWAM family. We're getting involved in bringing the better story about sex. God bless you guys.